Yo guys, what's good, what's happening, and what's going on? So I mentioned on yesterday's video about some future upgrades. The Acer Evolution, I guess we can start calling it because it's no longer a nitro suck face. Pretty much everything but the main board, the solid state drive, and the CPU have been changed out. So it's evolved. It's like a Pokemon. Started off little, got really big and useful. Not to say the original one wasn't useful. It's just now it's more useful. Anywho, one of the problems I'm having is after I discovered that it edits really well, I decided to start editing Rust footage on that computer and then just leaving it on the uh, Clue of the Survivor channel for easy uploads. I can edit my templates on there. I got my Photoshop from like freaking 2003 installed which is not windows compliant but it works anyway or windows 11 compliant it works it's just it's kind of glitchy but i guess the job done so i'm using that until forever well until it doesn't work anymore then i'll probably figure out gimp anyway one of the things is is when i record footage i record it to a usb drive but then editing the footage it's kind of chunky it's it's kind of slow it's kind of laggy because access time to the usb drive is no good and i mentioned in the past that it'd be nice to install remember i bought that card that goes from a pcie 1x slot to a nvme well usb and nvme over usb you get about four or five hundred megs a second which you think is enough, but it's still pretty chunky. When I had that card plugged into the editing rig, I was getting about a thousand megs a second. So that's really good. Now the editing rig is only PCIe 3.0. The Acer Loser Nitro Suckface or Acer Evolution, whatever we're gonna call it, is currently PCIe 4.0, faster data transfer. So theoretically they say online, yeah, I should get 2000 megabits a second over a 1X slot, give or take. Probably, I'm, I'm thinking more in the 1500 to 1700 range. However, the problem with the Acer motherboard is all it has on it is a 16x and a 1x slot and the 1x slot is pretty dang close to the video card which is probably not good for thermal dissipation of an ssd so i figured there was no way in hell until a subscriber named 2cv bloke mentioned that you can buy extension cables for the 1x as well as a 16x now i knew about the 16x extension cables because people use them all the time on mining rigs and i knew there was a 1x to 16x option but i didn't realize you could buy an extension cable specifically for the 1x card so dragonfly just showed up almost didn't see the package there but there it is they stuffed it between my Oh, recycling bin and the uh, cement slab. So awesome on them. And within this package is the cable that I need to connect the old PCIe 1X card to NVMe. So what I'm planning on doing is extracting the NVMe drive from the enclosure, putting it on the card and installing the card in the computer using this cable. Let's see what this cable looks like. This should up my access time. We'll do a test before and after, and I'll show you the uh, read-write speeds before and after this upgrade, and we'll see if it's actually worth it. Because honestly, at this point, I'm not sure. I may have wasted money, but let's have a look-see. I do have other upgrades coming in for the computer as well. I got a, a fan controller and some extra fans, but literally this cable here, she's not a big one. She's kind of small. I didn't realize it was gonna be that small. How is this sealed? Whatever. I has pocket knife. But this cable here is basically plug it into the board, dangles down, it'll keep it away from the video card, and that way there I can plug in the old PCIe 1X card. Basically this jobby right here will plug into here, like a so, and then I can bolt this to the board, or bolt this to the computer, and have my 1X SSD on board, and this should hopefully increase the performance of the solid state drive and make it run a little quicker than USB 3, or uh, USB, uh, yeah, 3.1 speeds. I guess we'll have to take a look. So it's the E drive right now that we're uh, using, and if I do a test, I'm just doing 64 megs, I'm getting 554 megabytes per second, which you'd think would be more than enough, but I find it's pretty laggy in the system. So we will basically go ahead. I don't know why it's not doing the right speed. It's only doing read, but yeah, 454 megabytes per second. Not exactly amazing, but it works. Like prior to using, like what I was doing originally was I would transfer the drive over to the editing computer, copy the footage to the editing SSD, edit the content, and then go from there. 
Um, I never noticed a problem while doing that. It's when I started editing right off the SSD on this computer that I started noticing a problem. And this seems like the cost effective way to fix it. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this. Should be a pretty easy install. Should be just clip, clip, bolt, done. But we'll see how this goes. All right, so the first thing we need to do is take this SATA drive out of this enclosure. Pretty easy, press and pull. And there it is, we got a crucial, I believe this is a one terabyte. Yeah, I believe this is a one terabyte crucial drive. These cases from Insignia are kind of nice to take them out. You just literally turn this pin. I showed this in the past and then you pull up and there is your SSD exposed. Pull it out, done. And then I'm just gonna reinsert the pin so I don't lose it and lock it back away. And now I got another enclosure available to use for something else later on if need be. And then I'll take this, grab my iFixit kit. There is a small screw, I need a smaller screwdriver. There is a screw retaining down here on the card and you basically just remove the screw. Don't lose that screw because it is tiny as frig. And if you lose it on the carpet, consider it lost for life. Then take your SSD, these things are keyed. You line it up with the keyhole on here, pop it in. And then when you press it down, you bolt it in place and you have your SSD mounted to the card. Then you just screw it in place and boom shakalaka, SSD installed on card. Now to put it in the computer. Figured we'll make this easier by turning on some freaking lights so you guys can see. Okay, I'm literally gonna do this the way you should never do a computer because of static electricity. I'm doing it right on the carpet. All right, first thing we need to do, remove the piece of glass that's covering the case. For that, I don't even need a screwdriver. These are thumb screws. I don't even know why they put Phillips heads on these because you're not supposed to crank on them because you risk fracturing the tempered glass. But maybe they do that so people will crank on them and fracture the tempered glass, because that's probably the most expensive part of this case is that stupid glass front panel. Seeing how this case was literally a $70 case. Now, I'm gonna have to extract the video card to get to that PCI 1X slot, because as you see, it pretty much covers it. So that's gotta go, which is upsetting, because I was really looking forward to not removing anything from the computer and just doing the mod, but whatever, we'll get it. Alrighty, with the case out, you can see that 1X slot there. I'm not sure how far down I can go with this cable. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the cable now and just see exactly, well, theoretically, I should be able to go down to here. So that should work. Even better, I can go down from the second one from the bottom and I, ha I don't have it screwed in yet, but it looks like it's gonna fit. As long as the video card clears the tiny little millimeter extra gap and it should. Alrighty, we're all bolted in. That is pressed in firmly. There's no like clips or anything to attach that. It just sits in there. That is attached firmly. So as long as that cable actually works, we should be good. Let's get the video card back in. Alrighty, cards all bolted in. I've been talking about the um, chipset overheating. That chrome piece you see right there, that is the motherboard's chipset. Normally those have heat sinks. I'm taking a look and it looks like I do have some clearance between the video card and something to install a small heat sink. Also, I got to figure out if you can run an E card to an M card 23 series SSD because I might be able to jam another SSD right there. That'd be pretty cool. All right, let's button this thing up and see if we can see the hard drive. Alrighty, we're booting in. What I found funny was the moment I plugged in the main board or more when I plugged in the power supply, all the lights turned on, including the one on the PCIe slot. So the motherboard's constantly getting power. Alrighty, she's up and running. Oh, frig off steam. Holy crap. So there it is right there. This is the drive. Friggin' everything's just loading up at once. There we go, get rid of that. So let's run our disk thing. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Let's do it on C drive. Of course, that one's gonna be fast. Let's do it on E drive. And let's see if this is a worthwhile upgrade to go from USB 3 to PCIe 1X. Let's see what kind of speeds we get now. So we just doubled the speed, 876 megabytes a second. Now, that's not too bad, but if you look at something on a 16X slot, like the C drive here, it's 3579. You take a look at the D drive, which is my main storage drive, it's 7,000, almost. So the reason why the D drive is faster is because it's an aftermarket uh, SSD and it's PCIe four speeds. The one that the Acer came with originally, they said it was PCIe four speeds, but it's not. It's PCIe three slash four 
and for some reason it prefers to run at PCI 3 speeds. Not a big deal. I just install my applications on there and all the video games go on the D drive. Like, uh, sorry, Windows is on the C drive. A couple other things are on the C drive, but I mainly use the C drive for just basic shit where the D drive is where I store all my video games. So now I should be able to open Vegas, wherever the frig the icon for that is. How come it's not in the system tray? Yeah, I installed Vegas 22 on here because I tried my license for Vegas 21 and it doesn't work well with multi-channel audio from OBS. So I was like, ah, screw it. I got a second license for Vegas too. Let's just load that in. So I got a little bit of editing to do here for this video, but I'm hoping it goes a lot quicker now with the jump cutting so that I don't have as much lag. All right, I think we're good. I think we're good. So now, how much space does that drive even have? I think it's a one terabyte. I could be wrong, could be a two terabyte. Uh, e drive, right click, properties. Yeah, it's a one terabyte drive, okay. It's the Samsung that I bought that's in the other laptop that's a two terabyte, I believe. That was supposed to go into that computer, into the editing computer as the C drive. But as you saw, that motherboard has some serious compatibility issues and it's very limited to what you can put in there. I checked the actual uh, website for the main board to see what SSDs are compatible. And then I went on Amazon to see if I could buy those SSDs or NVMEs, whatever. I'll always call them solid state drives, even though they're, they're NVMe, but whatever. Yeah, uh, they don't sell them anymore because that board is from 2018 and should have been retired a long time ago. But with AMD constant, or actually with ASRock, I should say, releasing BIOS update after BIOS update, literally taking a first gen motherboard and allowing you to run fifth gen parts on it, people just kept it. Upgraded to the 5700X3D and they're using that indefinitely until games don't no longer run on it. People aren't upgrading like they used to back in the day, man, because stuff just works on older hardware now. Like even this computer here, I thought about upgrading the main board, but why bother? If it works and it does the job, why bother? So I'll probably end up doing an upgrade. I'm just waiting on AMD to release their next gen cards. The editing computer is gonna get a huge overhaul. I'm probably gonna keep that case because I do kind of like it and it's one less thing to buy. Don't need to worry about the power supply. We got plenty of power, but mainly I wanna upgrade the processor, RAM and main board on that computer. and definitely the boot nvme because i don't want to run into that problem anymore 3070 3070 uh, rtx it's a good card for video editing be nice to have more vram but it'll get the job done anyway guys on that note i'm going to shut her down here so yes the acer evolution i guess we can start calling it this mod worked it doubled the access time of the drive from 475 to 875 close enough double for me and it seems to be working just fine. So awesome. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, click that like button. Any questions, comments, concerns down below, they go. And until next time, guys, live it to win it and pace the freak out. Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.